Hi everybody, welcome to the last Learn Shop for Venovenous Extracorporeal Membrane Oxygenation, Part 9, Nursing Care. The objectives for this one is to review some of the patient precautions as you and as an advocate. Nursing management, patient circuit observations, circuit complications and possibly emergency preparation. When it comes to safety precautions, the nursing responsibilities are essentially you are providing patient care. The medical responsibilities are to do with the technical aspects related to the ECMO care. Procedures, all procedures, have to have medical authorization, whether it's for central venous catheter insertion, nasogastric tube, pressure care, any movement of the patient, because again, we don't want to displace the catheters or damage the circuit in any way which will have an effect on the patient. Remember, no alcohol containing solutions must come in contact with the VV ECMO circuit. It can compromise the safety for the patient and the circuit. Prior to patient position changes and movement, nursing staff, their responsibilities are to prevent tension or torsion on the circuit and they typically instruct the team when to turn the patient or move the patient in unison and a physician has to be present. So medical staff have to be present to all care where patients are being moved or repositioned and their responsibility is also to perform a daily check for cannula position physically and on chest x-ray. When it comes to cannula care, post cannula observations include hourly dressing check. The dressings, depending on the organisational policy, are typically changed BD, 8 and 6, when all staff are still present within the organisation, not at 2 o'clock in the morning when you've got a skeleton crew. Two nurses are typically present and they're removed always, the dressings, towards the insertion site, not away because the cannulas are not sutured into position unless in your organization you do it because there's a risk of trauma there's a risk of infection it's not recommended the site is checked hourly and the circuit integrity is checked hourly constantly when it comes to skin care the important things are to minimize bleeding and the risk of infection so procedures should include mouth care oropharyngeal suction, tracheal tube suction. Most patients will probably have a tracheal tube rather than an endotracheal tube because this is probably going to be a long-term procedure, possibly. Um, tracheal tube changes, pressure care, no vena puncture is performed. No arterial puncture should be performed either. Hygiene is important. And everything is done gently and carefully and softly. Caution, skin suturing is avoided. Suturing is usually done to the dressing tape. There's no wet shaving. An electric razor is used. There's clipping. There's clot removal. Hemostatic dressings should always be available in case of bleeding. Pressure ulcer prevention is typically done with supine positioning, log rolling, side positioning as tolerated with a physician present. You can also use additional aids such as air pressure mattress, lifting frames. Team members should be present because they give permission. They authorise because ultimately the patient is their ultimate responsibility. And there should be a dedicated nurse to the ECMO lines and there should be a dedicated nurse to other critical care. There should be scheduled pressure ulcer prevention times, typically when everybody is still there, 8 to 8 not at 2 a.m. in the morning. Frequent skin inspection is recommended at the cannula and the tubing sites. When it comes to VV ECMO care, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at site, tubes, no suturing. All secured with adhesives or other forms of strapping. And you, 
as the nurse with nursing care are the ultimate patient advocate. When it comes to bowel care, faecal management systems include appearance and bowel softness and caution, not too much, because diarrhea can cause loose stools and skin breakdown and increase the risk of infection. When it comes to infection prevention control, standard precautions, universal precautions, body isolation precautions, whatever terminology that you choose to use, are always implemented, especially hand hygiene. Aseptic technique, this is for insertion of all lines prior to ECMO. Five lumen CVC is preferable. So again, you've got a lot of lines available to you without having to do extra punches. No line changes are recommended because of the risk of infection and possible bleeding. Positioning, head up is preferable to avoid ventilator associated pneumonias and increase drainage of secretions. Extended precautions, well these depend on your infection prevention and control department according to your organisational policy and it's probably preferable to minimise personal and family contact. Resuscitation, if resuscitation is required for a patient on VV ECMO, CPR, the flow rate is reduced because this increases blood available for CPR. Defibrillate, as per your organisational policy or your American Heart Association recommendation guidelines or what organisational policies um, or institutional policies that you implement in your organisation. When it comes to patient monitoring, these are the routine observations because again typically you'll have an ECMO dedicated nurse and an ICU nurse and he or she will be doing blood pressure monitoring, heart rate, pulse oximetry, capnography, ventilator observations, urine output, core temperature. But you can be working together. Both nurses typically work together. Patient monitoring also, patient circuit interactions. VV ECMO may affect arterial pressure monitoring, SpO2 monitoring because of recirculation, CVP, pulmonary artery, pulmonary occlusive pressure wedge monitoring could be affected. Cardiac output measurement, especially if you're doing PA thermodilution, won't be as accurate. And capnography monitoring won't be as accurate either because this requires native lung gas exchange and that won't be working initially because the gas exchanger removes carbon dioxide. Patient pressure monitoring. VV ECMO doesn't affect pulmonary artery pressure. It doesn't affect pulmonary artery occlusive pressure, which we sometimes call wedge, and it doesn't affect central venous pressure monitoring because all the cardiac output goes through the right heart and lungs. Blood flow in and out of the circuit are equal. Patient entitled CO monitoring, capnography, during ECMO with ARDS, it will be very low and not a valid indicator of lung function till native lung begins to recover and function normally. The patient circuit observations should include the pump, circuit, flow, speed, fresh gas flow in litres per minute, the gas exchanger, oxygen percentage and observe the oxygenator for clots and connections. Pre and post pressures, pressure gradients, which again will be the transmembrane pressure, and observe for clotting, thrombosis development. The heat exchanger, observe the water level, it will go down. Temperature should be set, and you should be monitoring what the actual temperature is. In the access line, observe for static, kicking, movement. This is potentially abnormal. And observe the color of the access line, blood, if it's dark and you've got static kicking movement, this could indicate clotting or an obstruction. Neurovascular, warm, skin, cold, pale, mottled, not good. Warm, pink, good. Pulses palpable with a Doppler, are they present or are they absent? Here's an example of a checklist example. And this is typically completed at the commencement of the shift by both nurses. The patient circuit monitoring, if you've got access insufficiency, which means it's not working properly, 
you've got an excessive pump speed, negative pressure, plus, 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 plus. You've got decreased venous return, possibly due to volume loss and bleeding. You've got vasodilation, sedation, boluses could cause this. You've got an increased intrathoracic pressure, which is limiting venous return or preload. Then you've got central veins collapsing. This could be due to hypovolemia, which is low preload. Preload is the amount of blood in the heart prior to contraction, essentially. The access pressure is too negative. The veins collapse. You're sucking, sucking effect. They're collapsing. The cannular obstruction can be due to thrombosis, abdominal compartment syndrome, too high pressures, abdominal distension. Nasogastric tube is important to decompress the stomach. Then you've got circuit blood gases. So you've got VV ECMO sampling, pre-oxygenator, which can indicate circuit recirculation, post-oxygenator, which is FiO2 and oxygen delivery. Alarms. All alarms should always be set. I haven't mentioned this here um, in relation to critical care. You should have all, all set correctly within the correct parameter ranges. Heart rate, pulse, saturation, blood pressure, systolic, diastolic, mean, and so on. I'm just talking about VV ECMO alarms here. Low flow, a preload dependent. They can tell you about access insufficiency, obstruction, kinking, and hypovolemia. After low dependent, return efficiency, obstruction, kinking, thrombosed oxygenator, which essentially is rare. So here's an example of a kinked line, which is more common. Here's an example of clotting in the oxygenator, which is rare. Here's an example of a membrane leak, which is very rare. Alarms in VV ECMO, sometimes depending on the machine, you can lose the signal. And if you lose the signal, this is to do with the ultrasonic flow sensor. And typically, you need more gel. The response typically will be a silent alarm, reapply the gel, and recommence. This isn't typically an emergency, but you've got to correct it. When it comes to decannulation, typically a physician, a perfusionist, does this. But it's as per organisational policy. But I would be thinking you don't decannulate, whether it's VA or VV ECMO, it's a physician's responsibility. Because things may not go right. It's the responsibility for the nurse or the allocated person to make sure all emergency equipment is ready and available if required. The crash cart, the resuscitation trolley, the defibrillator, tubing clamps, and an emergency drive which could manually keep blood flowing. But this depends on your machine. That's the end of our VV ECMO Learn Shops. Thank you for attending. If you found these of any benefit, as I always say, please suggest them to your colleagues. Subscribe if you choose to. If there are any other Learn Shops that you would like me to provide, please advise. Take care. Stay safe. See you in my other Learn Shops on YouTube.